June 21st, 2016, Erica is an aspiring model with a social media obsession. She's getting the photos she hopes will cement a career on a new luxury cruise liner sailing from Los Angeles to Miami. Erica has hired her sister, Cammie, an esthetician and a professional photographer, Dustin. For Erica, everything rides on this cruise, but Erica gets a surprise. Her husband, Bob, joins them at the last minute and his gesture does not have the desired effect. Husband and wife don't get along at all and their arguments escalate. Erica needs a productive trip. She believes her future depends on it. But unfortunately, Erica's planned rise to fame is about to take a detour that leads to a dead end. Erica is on a luxury cruise line, traveling from Los Angeles to Miami. Her goal is to boost her social media profile to a million followers and go from fledgling model to pro. Erica and I met at work. I liked her right away, basically. She just had this really great outgoing personality that just made people want to be around her. I don't think she really felt the same way about me, but that didn't really matter. Erica grows up in Omaha, Nebraska, She's an only child until her half-sister, Cammie, arrives seven years later. And although the half-sisters seem happy on the outside, their upbringing has always been something that haunted them throughout their lives. She was very open about everything in her life. Erica told me that her mom was seeing a man who was quite abusive and that forced her and her sister, Cammie, to basically live in a variety of low-rent housing projects and it really put a pretty big strain on their relationship, I think. Desperately looking for an escape from her abusive home life, Erica turns to social media as a safe haven. Erica finds it easy to build a steady, growing social media presence. Just as quickly, she builds an addiction to likes and tries to keep up appearances at all times. Erica and Cami weren't always the best people to be friends with. They often only thought of themselves. They could often be cold and indifferent. The sad truth is that Erica didn't know how to treat people. I'd be hard pressed to say if Erica even had one real friend. Her and Cami's upbringing was pretty harsh. As her social media accounts become popular, Erica is approached by a few small companies to promote clothes and cosmetics. Erica takes in modest payments for featuring their items in her posts. Through social media, Erica sees potential for money, popularity, and a legitimate modeling career, but she needs more followers. Erica is an attractive young woman who's obsessed with her online personality, her online profile. She loves to consider herself an aspiring model and likes to portray herself as well-traveled and living the good life in her online personality. Erica's sister, Cami, becomes a server at a busy restaurant chain. At night, she makes good tip money at the restaurant, which she uses to fund her training as an esthetician. When Erica sees the kind of cash Cami's taking home, she wants to get a job there too. 
Erica does not have the kind of success as a server that her sister does. She finds it hard to put down her cell phone. Erica wasn't necessarily the greatest waiter, that's definitely for sure. I think her mind was just elsewhere. That didn't stop her from getting a lot of tips, though. Even though Erica and Cami were half-sisters and they worked together sometimes, they never had a close relationship. There was always this undercurrent of animosity between the two. Erica finds her connection with the restaurant's manager, Bob, offers more potential than waitressing. A self-proclaimed workaholic, Bob has never been the coolest guy on the block. Catching Erica's eye is something he's not used to. He considers himself lucky. Bob has worked his way up from busboy at age 15 to the head manager. The demands of an often 16-hour workday prevent him from having much of a social life. He's thunderstruck by the attention of his young, beautiful new waitress. Their relationship moves fast. In less than three months, Erica marries our manager, Bob. He was twice her age. Needless to say, we were a little worried. I was pretty disappointed when Erica married Bob. I didn't really get along with him. I just thought Erica deserved someone a little better. After the marriage, Erica refuses to waitress. Her business is social media and modeling. I didn't really see Erica that much after she quit, but I did follow her on social media. There's usually a post, you know, every hour or so. Bob and Erica's marriage is going through a rough patch. The honeymoon is over before it even has a chance to start. So it's very hard for Cammie to show the proper sympathy towards her sister that she should be, maybe. Instead, she feels more sorry for Bob because it was Bob that she had such a close friendship with. It's Bob that she always felt sorry for. So we're seeing that now. Cammy seems to always be there for him when he needs someone to talk to. It seems like she's a little more friendly than a sister-in-law necessarily needs to be. Erica hears about a new luxury LA to Miami two-week cruise geared to the young and beautiful, and she sees opportunity. Erica insists Bob pay for her, Cammy, and a skilled photographer she's found, Dustin, to go on the cruise. She will boost her social media presence from 25,000 to a million followers, and then she'll be able to make real money. Erica is persuasive and unwavering in her belief that she can become a professional model through social media. With Cami and Dustin making her photos perfect, her goal is within reach. Bob reluctantly agrees. I think she definitely had what it took to be a model. She was gorgeous. But Bob, who has not had a holiday for years or enjoyed a proper honeymoon with his wife, shows up last minute as a surprise. But the surprise is an unwelcome one. Tensions rise immediately. Erica doesn't want Bob on the cruise. And Bob sees that his hasty marriage was most likely a mistake. Bob is so humiliated by the rejection, he threatens annulment or divorce. The couple takes their public argument to the privacy of their cabin. But when Bob wakes up at 9 a.m., Erica's not in the room. He's puzzled because she always sleeps late. Bob checks the balcony and finds Erica's cell phone is there. He's never seen her without it. Bob asks Cammie and Dustin if they've seen Erica since last night. They all recognize that Erica being separated from her cell phone is nothing short of extraordinary. Her cell phone is locked, and no one knows the password to get into it. Bob reports his wife as missing to the ship's captain. The captain can't help but note Bob's distinctly hungover appearance and the fresh scratch on his face. 
What happened that night between Bob and Erica? Is Bob telling the truth about Erica's disappearance? Or did something more sinister happen that night? Bob and Erica wed within three months of meeting, but Erica's half-sister, Cammie, knows modeling is Erica's only real love. Bob surprises Erica by coming on a cruise that's supposed to be about boosting her social media presence, but he's not welcome. And after a very public altercation between husband and wife, Erica goes missing. What worries Bob the most is that he finds her cell phone in their room. Erica is never separated from her cell phone. The captain immediately calls for a search of the entire ship. I started to get a little worried when there were no more posts, you know, every hour or so. That really wasn't like Erica. It made me start to kind of question what was really going on. The onboard search reveals nothing. A man overboard alert is sounded. The Coast Guard scours the waters. The first officer responds to an urgent call from a couple who are in the dining room when Bob and Erica argue. They report that Bob and Erica both said, I'll kill you at various times, and both threatened to throw the other overboard. They also overhear Erica say, you're so boring, I could kill myself. The first officer finds Bob's actions disturbing. He takes note and reaches out to other passengers in hope of more information. Twelve more passengers reach out to the cruise ship authorities and uniformly report that Bob is publicly drunk and physically abusive to Erica. Based on this information, and the fresh scratch on Bob's face, the captain detains Bob for questioning. On a cruise ship in the absence of an actual police force, crew members are trained to act as security. They would be responsible for alerting the captain to any odd occurrences on the ship. In this particular case, the captain needs to determine if Bob is a security threat. He's in fact the last person to have seen Erica. Bob is taken in for questioning by the captain and the first officer. Upon arrival at the interrogation, Bob appears scared and nervous. Bob freely admits that he and Erica argued publicly, but he downplays the incident. He and Erica both said things in the heat of the moment that they didn't mean. Bob contends he and Erica went back to their stateroom where they continued to drink and argue, and eventually he passes out cold. He shoots down the suicide theory. Erica is too driven to succeed. He goes further, describing Erica as self-obsessed, and his temper flares. Panicked about how guilty he appears, Bob tells the captain he's tired and tries to exit the interview room. A struggle ensues. The captain and first officer see a different, more violent side of Bob that raises red flags. And the captain and first officer overpower Bob and restrain him. Bob is told that he will be kept restrained and confined until they can turn him over to police to be questioned in Erica's disappearance. Cammy is waiting outside the interview room to defend Bob. She says he'd never hurt anyone, and that although her half-sister and Bob did fight on board, Erica deserves whatever Bob gave her, and more. Furthermore, she adds that Bob and Erica fought verbally, not physically, and that Bob was more scared of Erica than she was of him. Erica, though she was really tough, I don't think she would stand for anyone hitting her. The captain and first officer must escort Cammy away from Bob's holding room. Depending on how the relationship is, there can be jealousy between any siblings. Sibling rivalry is a common thing. 
Perhaps this is what was going on with Cami and Erica, that there was always this rivalry dynamic where perhaps one always felt that she was being outshone or overdone by the other. Bob's a likable guy. Cammy's always enjoyed a very close friendship with him. So now that Erica's gone, maybe there's a chance that something more can develop between the two of them. The captain informs Cammy that the water search has been called off. But she has a theory. Erica must be hiding in hoping to turn her vanishing into a publicity stunt, which in turn will boost her social media accounts. Cammy has no proof, except she knows her sister, and she knows her sister's popularity is more important to her than people. Dustin approaches the captain and suggests that Erica's half-sister Cammy should be given some consideration in looking into Erica's disappearance. When somebody volunteers information that somebody else may be involved, it's certainly something to be considered by the investigator. It may be an actual lead. It may be an attempt by this person to throw investigators off his own trail. Everyone knew Cammy had a drinking problem. She could get pretty violent after a couple of drinks. And the night she first meets Dustin, she is in fine form. According to Dustin, Cammie had plenty of motive to murder her sister. She'd always suffered in Erica's shadow, watching as Erica was the one that got all the attention. And as soon as Erica turned her back and concentrated more on modeling, stealing Bob would be Cammie's ultimate revenge. Dustin says he makes a huge effort to try not to engage with either sister about their personal issues. But Erica tells him something the night before they leave on the cruise that could be important. Erica tells Dustin that she's noticed a big change in Bob. She feels sure he's having an affair. Dustin doesn't ask for names, but he feels sure Erica is implying that the affair is with Cammy. Although Dustin is unsure if Cammy's boast about snaring Bob has actually happened, Cammy reveals a secret. Cammy is on the cruise to kill her sister, and Dustin has witnesses to her plan. Erica, an aspiring model, is sure she can boost her career through social media with professional photos taken on board a new luxury cruise ship. Her husband, Bob, surprises Erica by joining the cruise, and tensions escalate. The next day, Erica is missing. A search of the ship and sea reveal nothing. Bob is the only suspect, until Erica's photographer, Dustin, approaches authorities with new information. Erica's photographer, Dustin, tells the ship authorities that he knows Cammy came on board to murder her sister. And they don't have to take his word for it. He can describe witnesses who overheard the conversation. The witnesses are soon located and are identified as Lee and Barry of Tulsa, Oklahoma. They could not help but hear the conversation. Alcohol flows, and the more Cammy drinks, the louder she gets. Cammy repeatedly states that Erica doesn't deserve Bob and that Cammy knew him first. She obsesses about how it's not fair that Erica was born pretty and Cammy was not. There was definitely jealousy between the two sisters. More specifically, Cammy was jealous of Erica. The couple is ready to chalk up the conversation between Cammy and Dustin as heated sibling rivalry. But then Cammy gets specific. She's read about cruise ships and knows if a person falls overboard, they are unlikely to survive. Cammy intends to push Erica overboard in the dark. Then she'll have Bob to herself, and unlike her sister, Cammy will make Bob happy. Lee and Barry consider reporting the conversation, 
but Cammie is so clearly drunk, they never imagine she'll carry through with the plan. Investigators track Cammie down for questioning. Cammie says her talk at the bar is only drunken boasting. She doesn't like her half-sister, but would never actually hurt her. And Cammie doesn't see why she needs an alibi. She's Erica's sister. Cammie is astonished to learn that she is now being held as a person of interest, along with Bob. In most crimes, you have people of interest at all different levels who need to be spoken with. An interview often becomes an interrogation once somebody transitions from being just a person of interest or a possible witness to now a suspect. These interviews or interrogations require very careful plotting out of how you want to progress through the information to establish a timeline, to establish who saw what, when they saw it, where were they when a certain event took place. All that needs to be done with the end goal of determining who was responsible put in place. Although the captain and first officer continue to believe that Bob and Cammie had something to do with Erica's disappearance, they're shocked to hear from Cammie that Dustin and Erica were much closer than they had appeared, and that she continues to believe that Dustin is lying to cover the fact that he helped Erica stage the elaborate hoax for social media purposes. One of the working theories is that Erica has staged a sort of disappearance to generate publicity for herself, which would increase the number of followers she may get on her social media profile. This may just be a fabrication altogether. Authorities look to Erica's social media sites and are struck by how many recent selfies include Dustin. Why is Dustin in so many pictures with Erica? Could this really be a hoax like Cammy was saying? The captain and first officer are now thinking the jealous half-sister might actually be onto something. It strikes the investigators as suspicious that there's so many selfies with Dustin. Sure, they could become friends over time, but the fact that the photographer is in so many of the pictures strikes them as a bit odd. The pictures seem to indicate that they have a closer relationship than model and photographer. If this whole thing, if the murder is a setup as a social media hoax for publicity, then surely the photographer would probably be in on it as well. Dustin tells authorities he's only known Erica for about a month. Dustin is a busy freelance photographer in Omaha. Erica contacts him through his website and hires him for a one-off session. They find they have a natural chemistry when they work. Erica shares her dream of becoming a professional model. Dustin has several years of experience in the industry, and he knows Erica could go pro. A career could be made through social media, but her campaign needs to be special to distinguish her from other aspiring models. Erica assures Dustin her husband is ready to financially back her career. Dustin will be paid well to help her achieve her goal. Dustin tells ship authorities Erica lies at that first meeting. Bob is clearly unhappy about spending money for the enterprise, but Dustin admits he is seduced by the idea of going on an all-expenses-paid luxury cruise. Authorities conclude the interview with one request. The captain was playing a hunch and asked Dustin if he could conduct one more search of his room. As an investigator, there's no replacement for that sort of instinct you have that you may have missed something or that you need to recover something. Dustin readily agrees. He appears to have nothing to hide. Authorities conduct a thorough search, looking through all of Dustin's things, hoping to find something of value. Instead, the captain and first officer find nothing. Dustin tells them they should search Bob and Cammie's rooms one more time. He's sure they've missed a clue there. The oddness of the comment makes a big impression. Authorities now suspect Dustin may know more than he has revealed. Cammie's room reveals nothing. Then Erica and Bob's room is searched. 
This time, the possibility that Erica may be staging a hoax ignites a hunt in every corner. Erica may actually be hiding. In one of Erica's makeup bags, tucked into the top shelving unit, a room keycard is discovered. But it's not Erica's stateroom. It has another cabin number on it, 687. However, this room is quite different in every possible way. The key card is to a room that's as different as you can get from Erica's elegant stateroom. It's a cabin in the bottom level of the ship, an economy room. Doesn't seem to be very Erica. Authorities find a few items of lingerie that look to be about Erica's size and style. Room 687 is curiously unlived in. The captain goes to look inside the closet for any other clues. There, hanging among the clothes, is Erica's body. Erica's disappearance is no hoax and no accident. It's now a case of murder. Aspiring model and social media maven, Erica is ready to take her career to a new level. A professional high profile cruise shoot will attract the attention she craves. But Erica's dream is extinguished. She's found murdered in a mysterious economy room. Erica thought she was on board surrounded by her supporters. That is now proving to be far from the truth. The captain alerts the ship's doctor of the gruesome discovery. The body will be moved to the ship's moored in the early hours of the morning to prevent panic on board. It came out that Erica had been beaten with a blunt instrument, as well as being hanged in the closet by her neck. An attack like this is definitely not random. It's certainly premeditated and fueled by hate. What puzzles investigators is who rented this mystery room that Erica's lifeless body is found in. Could this be the mysterious killer's room? If so, how did Erica get there? The question on everyone's mind is, who does this room belong to? Could it be that simple to trace who was staying in that room and find the killer? Not very likely. Authorities swiftly discovered the name of the person who rented that room and it's a name they don't see coming. Guest services report that Erica rents an extra room, ostensibly as a retreat from her husband's snoring. She wants to book it under an assumed name for privacy because she says she's famous. But using false names to rent rooms is against regulation. Erica reportedly is not pleased. She warns guest services not to tell her husband about the room at any cost. This leaves the captain and first officer puzzled. Was there an ulterior motive for Erica to get this extra room? Was she planning a rendezvous with a secret person there? Their questions are answered when they're approached by a passenger with more information. His room is located in the economy wing, right beside the room Erica rented. He knows there's been trouble and thought the captain should know what he saw. He's awakened by yelling. Through a crack in his door, he sees an altercation. The passenger isn't sure what is said, but he sees a struggle and a kiss. The passenger finds it odd, but as soon as he learns there was a murder on the ship, he knows there must be a connection. Bob is informed that his wife has been murdered. Bob is asked about the extra room Erica rented. He is unaware of it. Then, Bob is asked how well he knows Dustin. 
does Bob ever suspect an affair? Bob says Dustin isn't interested in women. At least that's what Erica told him. Cammie also didn't know about the extra room Erica rented. And she too was told by Erica and Dustin that he is gay. Although things are slowly adding up, one question remains. Where was the murder weapon? The captain lets the cleaning crew know to keep an eye out for anything suspicious. Little do they know, their questions will be answered sooner rather than later. The captain requested that his cleaning crew report anything unusual that may have been removed from cabin 687. He may be looking for the murder weapon. He may be looking for a regular item that was removed as part of their cleaning duties. The murder weapon, essentially, is incredibly important in this type of investigation. It may reveal clues as to who committed the murder. There may be traceable evidence on that weapon that points to a particular suspect. A cleaner responds to the call for information and shows authorities where she vacuumed up glass. It is thick and resembles a magnifying glass, or perhaps a camera lens. Everything is adding up. Dustin is clearly not as innocent as he seems, and it's starting to look like he has more blood on his hands than any of the other suspects in question. Captain and first officer move fast to apprehend and question Dustin before the ship docks. Erica wants this cruise to transform her from aspiring model to totally on trend. And she has the team in place to get her there. But Erica doesn't finish the trip. She is found bludgeoned and then hanged in a tiny economy room she secretly rents for reasons yet unknown. Resentments old and new make Erica's husband and half-sister look like the prime suspects in her murder. But the professional photographer Erica hired is being exposed as someone very different from whom he claims to be. Ship authorities arrive at Dustin's room, but he has vanished. They check his equipment thoroughly this time and find an empty camera bag. It looks like one of his cameras could have been the blunt instrument used to bludgeon Erica. Dustin's name is called over the loudspeakers. The ship's crew frantically searches for the missing man. A passenger tip leads authorities to an empty dining room. Dustin tries to abscond, but he is easily caught, making him the third suspect to be detained in the murder of Erica. After catching the primary suspect, the captain and first officer know they have Dustin cornered and are ready to hear a confession. However, Dustin seems to have an answer for everything. By the time authorities bring Dustin to a secure holding room, he has regained his composure. Dustin explains how he panicked hearing his name blasted over the loudspeakers and had an instinctual flight response. He's sorry for trying to run. The captain tells Dustin that he is seen having a physical fight with Erica, kissing her and pulling her into the room where she was murdered. He wants an explanation. Dustin is unfazed. He claims the scene is misinterpreted. Erica rents the room to hide out because she is afraid of Bob. Dustin merely offers moral support. 
Dustin is asked to explain why he has an empty camera bag in his room. Dustin had a camera stolen, but with the worry over Erica's disappearance, he forgot to report the theft. Then Dustin admits he had to lie about being gay. It was Erica's idea. Bob is so jealous and violent, Dustin never could have accepted the job without lying. Erica was trying to save Dustin from being Bob's target. Dustin assures authorities that there was no affair. He knew Erica and her family are far too dysfunctional to get involved with. And Dustin has an alibi for the time of the murder. He was with a woman. She will prove he's innocent. The captain and first officer came into the interrogation thinking they were going to get a confession, but instead, the case has become more challenging than ever. So Dustin has come forward with an alibi, indicating that he was with a woman around the time of Erica's death. Investigators now need to verify that information to determine whether he is cleared as a suspect or if he remains as a suspect. But before the captain and first officer can get to the bottom of the case, the ship is docked, and the two are forced to hand the case off to port authorities. Four people go on a cruise. And only three leave. And they leave in restraints. Bob, Cammie, and Dustin are turned over to Miami Port Authorities. Husband, sister, and employee, all with possible motive to kill. The captain and first officer are forced to hand off the case to Miami Port Authorities. Despite the progress made in the case, all three suspects are apprehended. Before starting their investigation, the Miami authorities reviewed the case and the three suspects. They're certain that after interrogating the three, they'll be able to find the clues they're looking for to arrest Erica's killer. Police first interrogate Bob, Erica's husband. Bob maintains his innocence and explains to authorities his side of events from the couple's fight to the moment he woke up and Erica's absence. What the authorities see is a broken man, not a murderer, a man that really had no motive to kill his wife, whose story seems genuine and trustworthy. Next, they speak with Cammy, who recounts the events leading to her sister's murder. Cammy continues to maintain her innocence, and the authorities see Cammy as more of a jealous half-sister than a murderer. Her story seems trustworthy. Next, the authorities move to interrogate the primary suspect, Dustin. The broken camera lens, his relationship with Erica, and the fact that he fled authorities on the ship all raise red flags. However, Dustin assures them of his alibi, which the authorities begin to look into. Police send out a unit of investigators to search the homes of Cammy, Bob, and Dustin. But the breakthrough in the case does not come from what they find in the suspect's homes, but instead what they find on Erica's phone. The authorities finally unlock Erica's cell phone, which will now help police to catch her murderer. Text messages were found that pointed to Dustin having an obsession with Erica. Uh, and this is information that wasn't brought forward initially and further points to Dustin as a suspect in Erica's murder. The affair begins on their first meeting. He wants to photograph his new love, to revel in cruise ship luxury he doesn't have to pay for, and primarily ensure Erica is far removed from her husband, Bob. An affair doesn't make Dustin a killer, but what is concerning is his ability to pretend to be someone he's not so seamlessly. Is this because he's adept at manipulation? Or is he actually innocent? He is the only one with a potential alibi. 
an alibi which immediately crumbles under scrutiny. The name of the woman Dustin gives authorities is fake. Erica's cell phone cracks the case wide open. The texts tell the tale. Erica rapidly comes to fear Dustin. She rents the small room to keep him happy. As investigators look closer at Dustin, they find that he in fact has a criminal record for stalking, domestic violence, and fraud. Backed against a wall, Dustin finally tells the truth. Dustin is infuriated by Bob's arrival. He wants Erica to leave her husband, but she is unwilling. She wants things to stay as they are. The night of the murder, the two have an intimate photo shoot in room 687. But then, Dustin makes a threat. Dustin tells Erica he'll show Bob the intimate photos. Their marriage will be over, one way or the other, and Erica calls his bluff. I followed along with the trial as it was unfolding. I just had to know what happened to Erica. According to the medical examiner, Erica's eyes showed signs of hemorrhage. So while the brutal blows to the head didn't kill her, the hanging certainly did. The brief affair and intimate photo shoot end with murder. Dustin is convicted of murder and family is left to speculate why Erica left her cell phone behind in her room the night of the murder. The pictures on Erica's cell phone showed the police everything they needed. Part of me thinks that maybe Erica left those photos on her phone as a backup plan that I think was sadly needed. She was beautiful and she was smart. She just never caught the break she needed. Bob remarried and had two children. He ended up quitting his restaurant job, citing it reminded him too much of Erica. He now works at a car dealership. Cammie lives in an apartment in Miami. Since her sister's death, she has vowed to never go on another cruise ship again. Fate finally catches up to Dustin. After pleading guilty to murder, Dustin is sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Bob and Cammy have never forgiven him for what he did. As for Erica, she's laid to rest two weeks after the ship docks. In the wake of her death, her family has removed all traces of her social media accounts. For all intents and purposes, it's as though she never existed. <laughs>